Hi guys, Adam here. In the last video, we made headshots, or dynamic headshots, um, where we, if we change the name, the headshot, and we'll change as well as the data that we have. So, <clears throat> excuse me. What we're gonna do now is let's go back to our planning. So what we said is we wanted a, lot, a bunch of KPIs and we wanted some things over time, some gauges, and I think the, the easiest thing to tackle right now is just doing some overtime graphs. And the way that we're going to start that process is that we're going to create lists that we're going to use to get our metrics. Because we don't want this to just be a static graph that's um, sleep quality over time, for example. We, we might want to pick whether it's sleep quality, stress, RPE, SRP, who knows. So what we can do is we can create lists and have them be a drop-down menu for us to pick from, pick from, which will then change the graph contents. So the way that we're gonna do that is we're gonna go to our reference. Right now we have one list, which we will use as a drop-down here. And now we're just gonna create a couple more. Let's say readiness graph, or readiness OT or overtime graph, that's what I'm gonna call it for now. I like to separate. This sheet is probably going to end up being really long. It, this is You're never going to go into this sheet, really. It's just your reference sheet um, that nobody really sees. I'm going to change this, and I'm going to make this the performance. And then we're going to add the items that are relevant for readiness in our data set. Uh, well, just the names of them or how we want them to appear. The easiest way for me to do this is actually probably go to our data viz and get these items here, stress, sleep quality, energy, muscle soreness, confidence, and then readiness scores. Another one, I'm going to copy those. Now there's a neat little paste special here. If you right click or you go to paste special, you can do something called transpose, which if you copy things that are going this way, you can paste them down, going down vertically and vice versa. So here we have a list of things for readiness. And maybe in this graph, we also want to, maybe we include RP and SRP and stuff like that in this drop-down menu. You can, you can decide whether or not you want to do that or if you want to have a separate training load area and, and do that there. For, for the purpose of this, I'm just going to do, add all these together. So we have a big drop-down there. Then for performance, Let's take these things that we have, our performance indicators, let's copy them, and again, let's transpose them here. And we probably don't need all this stuff. I'm just gonna rename them a little bit, trap bar, DL, bench press, that's fine. Jump height, you got, don't need the, the, uh, the measurements there. So now we have two lists. Now, in our data viz, we're going to have a, similar to what we did here, let's just copy what, maybe what we have here. And let's say, readiness, readiness picker, and let's say, performance picker. And then we're also going to have date pickers for each of these things. So let's go ready, readiness date, and let's say performance date. And this is just me filling space, making sure that we have all of our things that we need to account for, accounted for. So there are pretty much going to be four things that we can manipulate with each of these graphs. We're going to be able to pick a date, and picking that date will change the end date of this graph so that we can see stuff over time, over different date periods. And we want to be able to pick a metric, again, to see in these graphs. That, that holds true for both of them. So the next step in this process is to create drop-down lists. And we can do it in a couple of different ways. We can make the drop-down list be automatically updating for things that we add to these lists. However, uh, we haven't gone through the data side of things yet, but we will. If we do add things here, or if we do make it that way, where things automatically, or the list that we have automatically update when we add new items, that when you select that item, it might not necessarily work. And it, probably won't work unless you update the formulae where the data is. So, well, let's do it that way because it's a fun way to do it. 
And the way that we do that is let's go to the readiness picker, for example, and we're going to do something called data validation, which is creating a drop down list. I click on data, go to this little icon or find data validation, click on it. And I'm going to select list. That's what I want. And now it's asking me for a source. And if I wanted this to just be a concrete list, I can go to the reference, select all these, do that. And now it will say what, what my source list is, and I can click OK. And if I do that, I'll be able to select from any of these items. Nothing is happening because we have no data or a graph. But what happens if I add um, uh, hello, hello, friend, more items? If I go to this data viz and I want to select them, they will not be in this list. So that's one option that you have. And the way that you get around that is, or to add those things, is you'd redo the data validation and you'd refresh or you'd update the reference list to include those things. Click OK. Now they'll be there. However, if we want this to automatically update, well, let's, let's remove these. And if I go back to, to the readiness picker, now what you're going to see is you're going to see blanks. So there are a couple issues with this. One is if you remove things, and depending on where you remove them, you'll see blanks. And the other is that it won't automatically update when you add items. But there's a way around this, and we're going to go through that. So you can take your pick. We're going to type in a formula here, say equals offset. I'm going to click this here. Make sure that there are dollar signs before the C and before the two. Comma, zero, comma, zero. And there's another formula, and that is count A. So we're going to do comma, count A parenthesis, open parenthesis, back into our reference. We're going to select this whole thing here. And then after that, we're going to close the parenthesis. And do minus one and then do another closing of a parenthesis to finish the formula. And I'm going to click OK. We applied that logic in this cell. Notice we still have a drop down list and it includes all of our items. If I go to the reference, but now let's say that I add on hello and friend, just like we just did. And I go back here. Now, hello and friend are added to my list automatically. Now, remember, we need to update the data that these things are referring to, or else nothing will, they won't work but at least we don't have to update our list. And then if I remove hello and friend, they'll disappear. Okay, so we're gonna do the same thing that we just did with the performance picker. So I'm gonna click on the cell that I want, go to data, data validation, list. And again, you can do this either way, equals offset for me, go to reference, up this cell, make sure that the dollar signs are around it, comma, zero, comma, zero, comma, count A, the second part of the formula, select the entire column, and then close the parenthesis, minus one, close the parenthesis, click enter, and now we have another list to pick our performance metric that will automatically update. Now, when we do, I think that we can do our graphs or we can get the data ready for our graphs. And remember, these graphs are gonna be talking with, or the data for these graphs is gonna be talking with these dates here. Right now, for now, I'm just gonna go equals for the readiness date, whatever this date is here. And I'm gonna do the same thing, equals, the performance date here. Now, when I go to the reference, or I'm going to do this information in the reference, I'm going to create, I'm going to put the data in the reference. So we might have a whole big thing here that is readiness um, over OT graph data. Oh, I said date, but, and this is where our calculations are going to kind of reside. So the first question is, 
is how many days do we want to show in the readiness graph? Well, it's up to you, but I'm probably going to do, I don't know, you want to do 7, 14? 14 sounds good. So for our end date, let's say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. I'm going to do, this is the end date that we're going to be talking to. I'm going to go equals to my data viz, the readiness date. I'll click enter. So my end date is going to be this date, whatever the one is that I pick in here, which is right now it's equal to this, but that won't be the case later. I just want a date that works. So now we need to get the day before this and the day before that, um, et cetera. They're depending, I'm going to do this in, in a, in a little bit of a different way um, because an easy way is I could do equals this minus one. Okay, that'll give you that'll, that'll give you the date. And if we drag it across and I make these bigger, it'll keep on subtracting one day. But there's no guarantee that you um, have a date for every day in your data set. Uh, maybe there is, maybe there isn't, but I'd like to do it in the conservative way. So there are a couple of things to think about when we do it this way. We need to consider, I guess, the the maximum the maximum date in the data set, the minimum date in the data set, and what the most recent date is um, to do it this way, or not this way, to do it some other way. And the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna add in a couple of a couple of caveats here in case something's blank or we reach reach the minimum date in our data set. So what we're gonna do instead of this minus one thing, um, w w w which could be fine, um, it's not very complex, it's really easy to do. If you have performance data that is being collected once every couple of weeks, it might not be a great graph to show because there'll be so many dates and not a lot of data. It's up to you. I'm, I'm going to do one that gets the most recent date with caveats, um, and you can choose to use it or not. It's a little bit more complex. So I'm going to say equals if or. So if equals if, if or min ifs able daily my date my database if the date so i want I'll, I'll explain it after table daily date nope uh table daily name so the, i'm getting the minimum date for a name in my database that is equal to what the heck I don't know what just happened, but let me try that again. Table daily name, comma, is equal to this name, because this is the person that we care about in this dashboard. If the minimum date in the data set for that name is equal to this date, or, because I have the or, comma, or logical to this date equals blank, close off the or, if either of those things are true, then I want this cell to be blank. If it's not true, then I want to get max ifs or the maximum of something. And that's the table daily or our database date. If what's the criteria range, table daily name, if the name in that database is equal to our data is this name. Now I'm going to put dollar signs around it. I did that with both to, to lock that cell in. So when I copy the formula around, it won't change. If I click enter, well, that didn't work. Oh, I know why. Sorry. So the last part of this. So what I just did is I just said, if the date, uh, if the minimum date in the data set for Lisa Simpson is equal to this, or this is equal to blank, then make this cell blank. If not, get the maximum date for Lisa Simpson. That's not what I want. I want to get the maximum date for Lisa Simpson if, comma, table daily, if that date in the database, ready with table daily date there, comma, is less than, and this date. 
So what I have in this cell, or what I had in this cell was Lisa Simpson's maximum date. Now I want her maximum date only if that date is less than the date after it. Click enter, and it's 1027. If I copy this, and I'm just gonna keep on pasting it. Here, let me, let me, let me make these bigger. So notice everything should work just like the way we had it. And I'm not gonna drag this formula because I didn't lock columns in for the table, but I'm just gonna keep on pasting it. And you'll see the dates change. Keep on going all the way back to our, to our first day. And notice, all right, now I have a couple blanks. So what that must mean that either this cell is blank for this cell, for example, if we're looking at the formula in this cell, that must mean that either this cell is blank or we've reached the minimum date in the data set for Lisa Simpson. And then the same with this cell. So, and this is obvious because, so for this cell, if this cell is blank, it's gonna give me blank. And for this cell, if this cell is blank, it's gonna give me blank. But let's look at the database. My first date in our database is 1018. That is Lisa Simpson's last date. So when we go to our reference, that's why that's the last date there. And if I were to change, let's say, and the data is change this date to be, I don't know, um, 12, 15, 2017, and then go back to our reference. Now it fills all the way because we haven't reached the minimum date in the data set. Um, I hope that makes sense. Uh, this was a, a tough video to get through um, and we don't have any data here yet, but it's a little bit complex. So. In the next video, essentially, we're going to be able to copy these formulas over or this, th these formulae over for our performance graph data, and we'll be able to pull the data in. Um, we're going to go through a complex formula that pulls the data in based on the metric that we select for each of these graphs. And then following that, we'll create a couple graphs and have a lot of fun. So thanks for watching. Uh, I hope that made sense. I know it was difficult to get through. Let me know if you have any uh, questions.